<laughs> and he's fishing. Hey everyone, it's Andy here. I'm up a little creek in North Queensland and I'm going to try and catch my lunch. I've got some tins and some uh, yeah, leftovers in the fridge but I've got the crab pods here and I'm going to use a whole bunch of different lures and as I'm fishing I'm going to show you which lure I'm using and I'm going to tell you why I'm using it. I've had a lot of people ask me to do um, which lures are best for what species but I think it's, it's better if I just show you in the situation rather than just, just yeah, lay them out or whatever. So uh, yeah, first thing Let's drop these crab pots in. I want them in as long as possible. Uh, probably pick them up around uh, maybe three hours, four hours, check them, and then maybe check them again later on. So maybe catch a fish, maybe catch a crab. I have a cast net there, so if there's prawns around, I might see if I can get some prawns. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping to cook my own lunch today <laughs> rather than eat leftovers. So yeah, let's, get, let's drop these crab pots. So actually the first thing we need to do is defrost our bait got some little barracuda and I want them defrosted because if I throw them in my little cage they'll just fall out because the holes are too big so defrost them and uh, put some zip ties on them so you can see I've got the normal style pot there and I've got a um, little experimental one uh, Brett from Gladstone sent me that one to try so we'll, we'll give that a run um, yeah and I'm not really looking for anything particular, I'm just going to space these pots maybe about a hundred metres apart. Uh, there's not a lot of little channels coming off this creek, so yeah, just space them out nice and far and yeah, hope the, the crabs can smell the bait, which they should. I've also cut little holes in the, in the stomachs of the um, barracuda so that there's more flavour wafting down the river. So, down nice and straight. And there we go. Beautiful. If we get some crabs in that later. I'm going to start with two reels rigged up. The um, Sienna 2500 on the Samaki Zing. And on that one I've got a little soft plastic as a Samaki uh, boom bait. And a couple of split shots on there and a weedless hook. And the bigger outfit is the Finor Rampage 3000. And it's on a Omen Green spinning rod and I'm going to use the um, 15A bomber in like a yeah, Larry, Larry color. Uh, Kate from South Australia sent me that one a while ago and I'm getting good use out of it. Actually you can see all the all the teeth marks in it. I've caught quite a few fish on that so thank you again Kate and uh, yeah, we'll get into it. So the reason I'm using this lure at the moment is because the current the current's still quite strong and I want a lot of noise and this lure makes a lot of noise. So just to get their attention, because yeah, if the current's going past, all the fish are swimming pretty fast, you um, yeah, you want your lure to stand out. So how I'm working this lure is just cast it out, and just twitch, 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 turn the handle each twitch, and just work it back nice and slow like that. Lots of time for the fish to come and grab it. along those mangroves there. Lots of places for them to hide. Oh, yes! There! Yes! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a legal barrow, I think. Very sure. Because I do want to take one or two to eat as well as catch my lunch. Because the barrow season is going to close in a couple of days. And then I won't be able to eat barra for three months. It closes uh, 1st of November, I believe, and opens 1st of February. Oh, there he goes. Come on, there you go, we got him. Oh, and I think that, yep, I'm very sure that's a legal size barra. Just to check, always got to check, but just looking at it, it's going to be over 60. Settle down, girl. Yep, there we go, 65 centimetres. Another beautiful fish, hey? Very beautiful. There we go, beautiful. Nice big log sticking out.
Nose bar. Yes. Nice. Oh, he's a good one too. <laughs> that didn't last in the water long. Yep, he's a good fish that one. I reckon I might have my second fish for the day to keep. Oh, I've got this drag set pretty tight. And yeah, just a little tiny branch like that on the side. Yeah, they don't miss these, um, the bombers with the trebles if they hit it. They usually get stuck. I missed a, a lot of fish before on the, the single hook weedless uh, because they just, there's just not that much to get hooked on. Come on, where are you? Oh yes, that's a keeper. Yep, nice. Oh, great. There we go, hooks out. Almost. There we go. Always use pliers, don't use your hands. You'll, you don't want a fish like this stuck to your hand. Oh, he's a good one, this one. Let's have a look. Right up there. 60, just over 66 centimetres. So I've got my two keepers. Now I'm going to change to the, the skitter pop and have some, have some, have some fun. Let's um, put this guy in the esky so he doesn't stress out too much. So I may use that lure again to catch some more fish, but that's all chafed up. So I'm going to cut it off about there and retie it. You should always do that when you're fishing for barra. If they, um, if you get a couple or you miss a couple, they can really fray that line and make it real thin. So do that now before I need this. I'm going to use the little zing for a while with the samaki boom bait on it. The, um, the tide's slowed right down now, no, not very little current and this will allow me to, to flick right amongst the, the mangroves. I was getting caught up quite a lot with the, the bomber, 15A. But yeah, this one here will let me go right in deep because it's a weedless hook. And uh, yeah, should be much more enjoyable fishing. I was getting a little bit frustrated before. This is where the plastic comes into its own, skipping it right into there. I think that'd be a fish, wouldn't ya? So the way I'm fishing this plastic here, just get it right in close, Oop, bounce off the thing, and just let it sink for a bit. Twitch, twitch, then let it sink again. I'm, I'm fishing it actually vertically, so I'm covering, covering every bit of that snag, and then stop. Oh, something just had a go at it. A little brim, I think. Don't be afraid to cast at these little little twigs. Yes. Oh, that was a nice barra. Yep, got him. Oh, that's a bream. That's a different fish. Oh, nice bream again. Very nice bream. Right. I think we'll let this one go. Got one. Actually. If I have one for lunch, then I'll have, yeah, I'll keep this one too. There we go, nice brim. He's about the same sort of size again, around the 30, 31, 32. Beautiful. And yeah, we'll, I'll keep him as well. I'll take a couple home, eat one here probably. Nice. Little twig sticking out. Never give up an opportunity to have a cast. Right over the branch. Oh, parrot! Yes! <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, here he goes. A hey, little fella again. But oh, it's so much fun. Use the net this one. There we go. Nice little fish. Very, very silver looking. Okay, and I might just dump you straight in the water here. No crocodiles can get me there. Okay. There he goes. 
Off he goes. Beautiful. Oh, there are crocodiles in here, and I've actually seen one already this morning. I was a bit slow with the camera. But yeah, he swam right across the river. Let's go. Always fishing up against the structure. I'm on the um, upcurrent side this time. Yep, that's him. Oh, I think that might be Jack this time. Oh. Hit that hard and I saw a flash of red. Let's see what we've got. Oh, cod. There we go. Barra and then cod. I'll just lift him in. Same spot, eh? Settle down, buddy. That's actually not a bad black spot cod. There you go. There's a black spot cod. And let him go. Hey, off you go. He's good. So I'm just going to have a little bit of, bit of lunch. Always carry a tin of tuna. Brought a hard-boiled egg. And you guessed it. Homegrown banana. So just a bit of a snack. Still hoping for that crab. And I reckon we'll cook up that brim later on. But um, while the conditions are right, I'm going to keep fishing. Oh, looks like we have a crab. And I reckon it's a big male. That's pretty cool. Yep, looks like a male from here. Let's grab him. Beautiful. Yep, that's a male, and he's legal size. Nice. Now, to get him out of here. Maybe I'll just put him in the boat. So to get him out, I'll just shake, shake the pot. He'll, he'll just walk out, hopefully. And we have to try and grab him before he goes and hides somewhere silly. Come on, out you go. There you go. Alright, he's on the deck. And there we go. Now to hold a mud crab. That's what you want to do. They can't bite themselves here, but they can bite themselves here, so let's have a feel, see if he's full. Yeah, he's pretty full. So we'll take you for my dinner. Just do a quick check. I'm, I'm, yeah, he looks like he's legal size. Let's see, where are we going to put you? Put you there, and that's where he goes to. 116, so yep. He is one centimetre over legal size. And you, I will show you guys at home how to cook Mr. Crab. Okay. Just on a fire. And it's, uh, yeah, it's very tasty that way. So we'll put him to sleep. If you put him in the esky on the ice, they just uh, here, go to sleep. And then they don't feel anything when they cook them. Oh, that's a good one. Yep. <laughs> oh, he's right up against that log. Oh, I'd say he's probably legal again. I think I might keep a third one. Three months, one fish a month. That sounds pretty good. And yeah, these, um, these hooks just stick in there. They've rubbed me off there on the bottom, I think. Oh, we don't go under there. Oh, come on in, fish. Oh. There we go. Come on. There we go. Got him. Let's have a look at him. There's another good fish. Out of all the fish species that I catch, this is probably the one I'd like to keep the most because they just reproduce so fast. They yump. They can, um, I think it's double their population in, in about four years. So, 
Hold on. Yeah, we'll definitely take this one as well. Yeah, if they didn't reproduce so fast or grow so quick, like this fish is probably only three years, maybe four years old. So they can put on, in, in really good times, they can put on three kilos a year. This fish here is probably around the four, four and a half kilos. So yeah, beautiful. So what I thought was gonna be my lunch is gonna be my dinner now. I'm gonna uh, go and find a spot to make a little fire and show you how to cook mud crab real easy and very tasty. Let's go find a good spot. Well, this looks like a good spot. It's a little on the windy side, but I think a little hole. And I've got everything I need. I've got Mr. Crab and I've got a lighter. That's all I need. So let's get started. Get some firewood. I tried a couple of times to make fire in this wind. It's, um, it's a little bit hard, so I've just got a whole bunch of dry leaves and uh, see if we can get them going. But yeah, it's not, not real easy at the moment. It's blowing about 20 knots. Almost put it out there. Oh, that's getting hot. It's my third attempt, and it looks like, oh, maybe. No, nah, missed it. All right, try again. There's little twigs on there. Okay, maybe this time. Don't smother it straight away. Come on, come on fire, there we go. That's looking better. Alright, so uh, keep this fire going. And uh, probably in about 10 minutes I should have some nice coals. And I just want a nice bed of coals, I don't want flames anymore. And then we'll cook the crab. So the fire's burning nicely, Mr. Crabs. Ready to go. And I did actually want to catch uh, at least two crabs. I was going to show you how to cook them this way, which is really basic, you can do it almost anywhere. And the other way, which is really gourmet, and I need another crab for that, so that's going to be in another episode. But yeah, it's uh, very tasty. So just wait for this fire to burn down. The sun's still, still up. I'll get home before dark, so that's all good. And then I gotta, yeah, take care of the fish. But uh, yeah, let's just, oh, that's getting really hot. <laughs> so we'll just, yeah, get some coals happening. Um, crab actually, uh, I, people used to say 20 minutes to cook a crab, 10 minutes max. So as long as there's a lot of steam, a lot of heat, 10 minutes is all you need. You can eat raw fish, raw crab but you don't want to put it in there for 20 minutes. So once we get the coals, it should be 10 minutes. There we go, that's pretty good. It's just a, just a nice bed of coals there. And I'm deliberately going to throw the crab in upside down and claws into the heat. So there we go. And when all the little bits are red, that's when he's cooked. So uh, we'll probably eat the legs first, then the nippers, and then the body. So you can also already see the little swimming paddle. Oh, there you go. The swimming paddle there going red, and that one going red. So red means he's, he's cooking. So there you go, that's only probably only three or four minutes in. And you can see the nippers have almost turned, turned completely red there. And I've just thrown a little bit of little bit of coals on onto his stomach there, because uh, yeah, most of the meat's actually in in that bit where his where his legs join up. So yeah. as that twitching is just a few nerves. Um, he's uh, very dead already. So. so I just checked on the boat. Boat's all right. And uh, these I pulled off about oh probably only about five minutes in or four minutes in actually. So they're the legs, a um, couple of them actually popped off already, so to me that, that's probably a good sign they're cooked. And I'm going to munch on these, 
and wait for the, the rest of it to, to get completely pink. But um, yeah, I'll tell you how that tastes in a second. <laughs> Sun's just about to go down. This is still a little bit warm. But to get into these, you just try and break them in the middle like so. Oh, that looks cooked to me. There's not a lot in these smaller sections. Mmm, oh, very sweet. Um, actually, I should have kept that. Where are we? So I'm going to use the little pointy bit to pull the meat out of the smaller leg sections, like so. Mm. There's actually no hint of fire. I thought it might be a little bit smoky, but I have eaten this before. Like this. Um, it's a long time ago. Mmm. Yummy. I reckon the rest of that crab might be almost done, actually. It's been on there probably about eight, nine minutes now. Here's a good bit. I'll try and try and show you this bit. Ah, there we go. Yeah, not breaking, not breaking the best, but you can see the meat in there. It's definitely cooked. Very tasty. There we go. Nice. Mm -mm -mm. As you can tell, I've actually forgotten my tripod, so I'm trying to film me while I'm eating is not going to happen. But, um, there we go. Get that meat. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. Hopefully this sounds okay. Oh, there's a little bit of smoke there. That's nice. A little bit of smoky flavour. So I think we should lift Mr. Crab out of the fire. He's definitely going to be done. There we go. And cool down a bit. He's actually yeah, probably a little bit overdone. Probably left him in a little bit too long. But we'll still enjoy him. Oh, there we go. There's a nice bit of meat. Mm -mm. Very nice. Just a little bit left in here. Oh, there's the other bit. A little tiny bit here. When I eat them like this, I eat every little tiny bit. Mmm. Empty. Let's give it another leg. I am waiting for these to, to cool down and then we'll, we'll munch into that. Look at that. That one's going to come out. Maybe. No. Oh, well. We'll get in there. Oh, these nippers are still really, really warm. Let's see. Let's get this out of here. Oh, there we go. That's most of most of the nipper. It's a little bit shriveled. I think I overcooked it a bit. Oh, there you go. Nice bit of meat. Mmm. Um, super sweet. Oh, that is so good. Mm. Maybe a hint of smoke, but. Yeah, when it's cooked in the shell like that, the um, the shell protects it and keeps it moist. Well, they, it actually burnt through that shell, but um, normally, mm, I think the wind might have made the fire a little bit too hot. But um, I'm just going to keep eating this. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm, mm. No need to cook the fish. It's, um, one crab is a nice meal for me. Yeah, a little bit broken. Oh, there we go.
so good. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to watch more videos straight away, click way up there. Otherwise, if you want to uh, see my videos as they're uploaded, click the subscribe button. You get notified straight away. And anyone who wants to help me make bigger and better videos, I've got PayPal and Patreon. So pay PayPal is really good for um, just one-off donations, but you can do monthly as well. And some people may not, may not want to use PayPal, you can do Patreon. So yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully more to come very soon.